Hello family, hope you're well. Sea level. I just wanted to show you those clouds. Look how dirty they look. I mean, they, they just, and then you've got this other white stuff in the sky, which is, I don't know, some kind of fallout from the chemtrails. I mean, just look at the rip, this rippling effect in the chemtrails. This white stuff in the sky. We have had literally seven days. There's more of those black clouds there, which are not black because they're filled with water. It's because they are filthy, dirty chemical clouds. Um, and we've had seven days here in the UK, and this is the first day. Well, I, it, I don't know about the rest of the UK, but here in the north of UK, seven days without being able to see the blue sky. And it's very, very depressing when you don't see the, the blue, the sky above. The, the Bible says this. Uh, the, the firmament which is above which is what I'm, we're looking at right now there's power in the firmament the Bible says um, it's, in, it's in the I think it could be Psalm 150 or Psalm, Psalm 148 the power of the firmament so when we can't see this power of the firmament I, I'm, all we see is grey skies over and over again it has a, an effect on people and and just by I walked into town today from my flat and just looking at the people just you can just tell how this weather is affecting us because um, today the sun was out earlier on they've already blanketed it over as you can see with this blanket of chemtrails but the sun was out and people's faces changed they can see the blue sky they can see the sun and they were lightened by it um, they were cheer cheered up is what I mean to say and um, looked a lot happier so it just goes to show you what they're doing is so disgusting, I mean look at all this white stuff I mean how can anybody tell like, not tell that it's, it's not natural just look at that black stuff over there. I mean, gosh, that that ain't that ain't full of rain. They're not rain clouds. That's black chemicals. Anyway, Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's going to take us up through windows in that firmament into the third heaven, paradise. And if you haven't believed and laid hold of salvation, then please. Do it today. If you don't believe that you need saving, well, the Bible says we all have sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ went to the cross for all our sins. Yes, past, present and future sins. He was buried and on the third day God raised him from the dead. Just by believing that and calling upon him, you are saved with everlasting life. You're sealed with Holy Spirit and you are set apart and sanctified for the day of redemption which is upon us at any moment. It could be, it could be today. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But if you haven't believed, uh, lay hold of your salvation and, and do it soon because you're not guaranteed your next breath. And without Jesus Christ, when you die, you will go straight to the judgment seat of God. And without having believed on Christ to have paid the debt in full for you, for all your sin, all your faults and things that you've done wrong in your life, then you would be guilty and you would go down to hell. But if you believe on Jesus Christ, he has paid the debt in full on the cross for all your sin. That's why he came to the earth, to go to the cross, to die, to be sacrificed for all our sins, so that 
our relationship with God the Father, the Creator, could be restored as well. So, restored fully. So if you haven't believed, I urge you, I, I pray that you won't leave it any longer. Because he's coming. Jesus Christ shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. So, just look at it. I mean... There's no lines in God's natural uh, sky. You'll never see flat lines like like that great big line. Not, no, never. Um, and that just can show, shows you this blanket of these chemicals, and you can see the the scaly, the scaly type effect, which I don't know what causes it. Whether it's the nanobots in it. Uh, or whether it's frequency being fired for it, I'm not too sure. But just look at all that, that white stuff. You're telling me that's the cloud of God? It's not. And those things, they just seem to be hanging there. And they're still in the set, exactly the same place as they were before. And the black, black, horrible chemical clouds. They're not rain clouds. I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old and I... I've, I knew the, the sky bef before all this and I can tell the difference between God's clouds and this crap which is manufactured and pumped into the atmosphere, atmosphere by drones so anyway God is bigger the Holy Spirit is bigger and we have to believe on him He's bigger than all of this, because he is. So I'm going to get off, just make this a video short one, but just wanted to show you, again, show you more evidence of the fact that they are altering the atmosphere of God that he set. They're doing what is called terraforming, altering the climate to support a foreign entities terraforming so I'm going to get off but believe on Jesus Christ if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved will be saved and none can pluck you out of his hand once you are saved not even yourself which is very comforting to know that you will always be belong to God and never utterly cast down utterly uh, just left forsaken never he says I will never leave you I will never forsake you so when you feel like where is God in your troubles and stuff he's right with you going through it all with you when we become faithless Jesus remains faithful faithful to his promises so when, when we don't believe that means that Jesus still sticks to his promises and will save us to the utmost. Being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you shall bring it to completion by the day of Christ Jesus, shall perform it by the day of Christ Jesus. So we can be bold and confident that once you're saved, you are always saved. You can't be born again, born of God, and then lose your salvation. So flee away from anybody who tells you you can lose your salvation. They don't know what they're talking about. So I think some of them are actually saved, uh, just have not um, understood um, that God's everlasting life is everlasting. I mean, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and if you look in that chapter you won't see any other conditions to that um, gaining everlasting life apart from belief 
Believe on Jesus' death, burial and resurrection, his sacrifice on the cross for all your sins, that he was buried and God raised him from the dead on the third day and you will be saved forever and ever. Hallelujah. God bless you all, family. I love you all. Bye for now.